this year's free agent pitching class is actually kind of awful. I mean, outside Trevor Bauer, who himself only has two really great seasons, who is there to get? You got Jake Odorizzi, Jose Quintana, Masahiro Tanaka, and we'll get to him later. But the point is, for teams looking to contend that don't have a lot of starting pitching, there really aren't a lot of great options. Pretty much every team in the majors has to be looking at Tomoyuki Sugano, the 30-year-old Japanese starter for the Yomiuri Giants that's finally getting his chance to get posted to the MLB. Sugano has arguably been the world's best pitcher not in the majors over the past five years or so, and the numbers of the hardware back that up. He won the 2017 and 18 Eiji Sawamura Award for Japan's Best Pitcher and the 2014 and 2020 Central League MVP Award. In eight seasons for the Yomiuri Giants in the NPB, he's posted a 2-3 ERA in 1,360 innings pitched, and he has the impressive peripherals to back that up. In terms of pitching profile, Sugano had more strikeouts than average in the NPB, and his stuff should translate to about league average strikeouts in the majors. His real best attribute, though, is a pinpoint accurate fastball command, and he combines it with a sweeping slider that tunnels really effectively with his fastball, and it generates a really great weak contact and swing and miss. While his strikeout and BABIP numbers have fluctuated a bit during his career from great to about average, his walk rate and home run rates have pretty consistently hovered around half of league average, just more evidence of his control and deception. It is actually really remarkable how well Sugano's NPB career lines up with another Japanese import that's had a ton of major league success, fellow 2021 free agent Masahiro Tanaka. Both Tanaka and Sugano have won the Salamuda Award and MVP awards in the NPB. Both are medium build righties that throw the same pitch repertoire, mostly featuring a fastball, slider, and splitter, and they pitch them with similar velocities. Both have a penchant for coming through in big games, with Sugano notably throwing a no-hitter in a critical 2018 NPB postseason game. Maybe most importantly though, their peripherals during their stints in the NPB were almost identical, with the only major difference being Sugano strikes out a few less people while allowing a few less hits on the whole. Knowing this, it's pretty easy to predict that Sugano will have similar MLB numbers to Tanaka's at a similar age. Tanaka, since he was 30, has settled in as a solid, innings-eating mid-rotation starter that doesn't walk anyone and he strikes out enough hitters to get by. If Sugano can be as good as Tanaka has been over the past few years, then he should be unequivocally classified as a success in the majors. Now, it's also entirely within the realm of possibility that Sugano reinvents himself in the majors and becomes a different style of pitcher. We saw Kenta Maeda have relatively similar peripherals to both Tanaka and Sugano, with even lower strikeout rates than both, but in the majors his strikeout numbers blossomed while his walk numbers also rose with them. This manifested in Maeda's stint on the Dodgers where he'd often pitch well, but have to get out of jams caused by walks and he'd rack up high pitch counts early in the games, to the point where LA would use him more as a reliever in the playoffs. If teams wanted to use Sugano in this way, they could probably juice a few more ticks of Velo out of his fastball and raise his strikeout numbers, but his walks would also rise in kind similar to Maeda. Personally, I don't think this is a great way to use Sugano, since his best asset is his command, and I fully expect teams to try to work with his current pitching profile. Sugano should be a pitcher that will produce about 3 war a year over the next few years, that won't dazzle anybody, but gets the job done and throws a lot of above average innings. In the current state of MLB, where finding consistent starting pitching is arguably harder than it's ever been, that is an extremely valuable asset. So what kind of deal can we predict for Sugano? Masahiro Tanaka's 7-year, $155 million deal he received in 2014 is the largest ever given to a player posted from Japan, so since Sugano is a similar player, he should receive a similar contract, right? Well, not quite. Sugano is entering his age 31 season, whereas Tanaka was entering his age 25 season in 2014, his first with the Yankees. It's pretty likely we've already seen Sugano at his best, and he's unlikely to be much better than he was in 2020. As we've already said, there's nothing wrong with that. If Sugano can be as good for the next three years as Tanaka, then he'll be a mid-rotation pitcher on a contending team. But the reason Tanaka was paid so much money was his youth, and his potential to grow as he adapted to major league hitting. Sugano will grow and adapt to major league hitting similar to Tanaka did, but he'll also do it as he ages past his prime, losing the physical tools that made him great. Now don't get me wrong, Sugano's pitching profile will probably age really well, but teams will certainly be cautious giving large multi-year deals to unproven pitchers that have tons of mileage on their arm. With his age considered, I'd guess his MLB contract to be in the neighborhood of 2 years 25 million, or 3 years 35 million. Now this number does come with a huge caveat, which I'll talk about in a little bit. What teams make the most sense to sign Sugano? 
Well, the cynical answer was basically every team in the majors could use another mid-rotation starter, but realistically, only a handful are willing to spend on one right now. The three teams people have been throwing around as likely landing spots are San Francisco, Toronto, and the Mets, but the Mets have recently been reported as out on him. This leaves the Giants and Jays as frontrunners, but I think there's some other dark horses to sign him. In my eyes, a team most likely to spend on a mid-rotation starter is one that needs a slight push to go from a fringe contender to a division frontrunner. The Blue Jays meet this criteria, but they aren't the only ones. It's no secret that MLB's central divisions are basically up for grabs with several teams willing to trade away assets to save money while also wanting to field competitive teams. Three teams in these divisions that need some pitching help are the Twins, White Sox, and Cardinals. The Twins and White Sox are locked in basically a two-man race, with the Indians likely to trade away Lindor and go into rebuilding phase. And a Sugano signing would be a great way for one to gain the upper hand of the other one, since they both have holes at the back end of their rotation. The Cardinals, on the other hand, make a little less sense on paper, but they need some pitching help, and this would pretty much cement them as the only team in that division actively trying to compete. Also, this kind of just feels like an under-the-radar Cardinals signing, if that makes any sense. Probably not. Continuing the Tanaka comps, it's also possible the Yankees will sign him as a sort of replacement for Tanaka, since he'll likely provide similar production at a lower price point, but for whatever reason, the Yankees haven't been linked with him too much. My official prediction for Sugano is 2 years $25 million to the Blue Jays, with a $10 million mutual option for a third year, since the Jays are a team that needs pitching right now to make a competitive push while their window is opening. They have the money to spend, and they would be an attractive option to Sugano, Given Toronto's multicultural makeup, and they signed Sugano's former teammate Shun Yamaguchi last year as well, which would ease a potential transition. But, well, remember that huge caveat I mentioned earlier? It's that Sugano has received an extremely competitive offer to return to the Yomiuri Giants, who made him the highest paid player in NPB with his 650 million yen a year salary in 2019 and 2020. This is about $6.5 million a year, which doesn't compete with what MLB teams can offer him but the Giants are willing to give him a 5 plus year deal with several options, which would potentially allow Sugano to be posted at a later date. Considering they have more competition, the Giants would also probably increase Sugano's salary in order to get him to stay. It's also important to note that MLB teams have to pay an additional posting fee to the Yomiuri Giants if they wish to sign Sugano, which would likely suppress his salary in the MLB even more. Without this posting fee, a pitcher with his projected numbers would likely be getting about $5 million a year more than Sugano is currently expected to make. It's very possible that if MLB team's offers are disappointing to Sugano, he'll simply return to Yomiuri and retain the option to try again next year if he wants to. Tomoyuki Sugano is unlikely to reach the same stardom in MLB as he did in NPB. But that doesn't mean he couldn't be an extremely valuable and underrated asset, one that any contender should be looking into to bolster their pitching staff. Considering this year's free agent pitching market is bleak outside one or two big names, Sugano should get his shot to prove himself as another successful starter in the majors, and I predict he'll be about as good going forward as Masahiro Tanaka will be. In other words, a good, not great pitcher that can have clutch performances and provide stability to pitching staffs like the Jays, Yankees, or White Sox that really need it, and that is absolutely nothing to be disappointed by. Thanks for watching guys, as always I really appreciate it. Sorry about missing that you Darvish video. If anybody wants to see that one, just comment below and I'll make it just for you. Again, thanks for watching. Make sure to sub to the channel if you like the content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.